Am I the asshole? For not hiding food from my autistic brother? As the title states, I have a nine year old autistic brother. I'm 17. He is on a diet where he can't eat sweets, gluten, basically anything that's sweet because my mom thinks it will help him or whatever. Because of this, we have to hide everything sweet in our house and I hate it. I left a brownie in the fridge and my mom got mad at me for it because my brother found it and she had to give him a piece because he wanted some he throws a fit sometimes otherwise. I get mad at her because I tell her that's her fault for not teaching him that sometimes the answer is a no regardless if he throws a fit or not. Am I the asshole? TLDR autistic 9 year old brother is on a no sweets diet mom gets mad at me when brother finds sweet because she has to give him some since he wanted some or else he throws a fit. Not the asshole. Speaking as an autistic person myself, I can tell you that your mom is full of more shit than a compost factory. The no sugar carbs diet doesn't work. All it did was make me miserable. Also, what's the point of hiding sweets and stuff if they give them to him anyway if he finds them? Seems kinda backwards, if you ask me. Not the asshole. How does your mom justify this? The whole diet thing does nothing in regards to autism and she should know taking such a crazy approach to food is only asking for problem agree with me and took away her keys telling Layla she is welcome to visit anytime without permission. X200B now her aunt has called me telling me I am cruel for turning father against his daughter and that it is Layla's house I should not have a say in who can and can't have keys. Layla didn't visit us since the whole incident nor talked on the phone. Not the asshole you asked that a person who does not live in your home, and hasn't for years, stop entering you home and going through your private things. That Layla wants to turn that into some kind of loyalty test or power play with her father is Layla's issue, not yours. I would ask the aunt if she would like her adult children, to routinely rifle through her belongings without her knowledge or consent, or to wander through her home without her permission, because that's what you are objecting to. Not the asshole she's coming in to snoop. Whether it's her house or not is irrelevant. She's not there to spend time. She's there to snoop. Not the asshole. That is creepy and wrong. Even when I stayed with my dad and stepmom, I never went through her stuff. Even now, I have keys for, just in case of emergency, I still don't just go wandering through their house. You don't have automatic ownership and unlimited access to your parents' residence and belongings when they are still alive and you don't live there. She doesn't live there. It's not her house. Not the asshole it's irrelevant whether it's her house or not, she could have at least told you she was there. You can't secretly mess up someone's house while you're out, then claim that it's wrong to take your keys away. How is she your deal? Anyway, not the asshole. Her behavior is creepy and you are fully in the right. Info is your husband divorced or did his former wife pass away? If she died, was any of her portion of the house left to Layla? Based on your reply, not the asshole. Layla doesn't own the house. While I always have had a key to my parents' house, I have never gone there without them knowing about it. It's usually to do them a favor. Layla majorly crossed a line by going through your things and I don't blame you for being uncomfortable with her having a key. Not the asshole. You pay rent, so it's your house too. Besides what she does is creepy as hell. Layla didn't visit us since the whole incident nor talked on the phone. Well, consider it a blessing in disguise. Telling me I am cruel for turning father against his daughter. Her actions did that, not you. Lol, the nerve. Not the asshole I can see someone having a key in case of emergency. If she was say your house sitter or something when you left town, but to enter someone's home just to snoop? Weird. Nota, she had no right to roam through your stuff, yes she may have been there before you but she wouldn't want you to rummage through her stuff while she wasn't around. That's also very odd that she only came over while you and your husband were gone. Not the asshole it is not her house it is you and your husband's house. 
she moved out and is an adult now so she doesn't live there anymore. Under those circumstances giving her a key would be fine for emergencies unless she violates your trust. She has violated your trust. Get the key back from her and tell her if she wants to visit it is on your terms and notice, with you at home. Then I would change the locks, install security cameras and alert your neighbors to tell you of any more visit by her. Not the asshole. That she is coming in while you are gone and going through your wardrobe is super creepy. I'd change locks even with getting keys back because it's easy to make copies. She does not live there anymore, it is totally inappropriate for her to come in while both of you are gone. This is different than her saying, can I come stay for a weekend and being alone while you go out. Curiosity is this maternal aunt or paternal aunt sister of hubby? Not the asshole. That is creepy and weird. Changing the locks would have also been a good choice, so she could show up to let herself in and find she no longer had access. The aunt is being stupid. Your husband took his daughter's keys. None of this is the aunt's business. Info she's in college. Where is her stuff? I still have my parents' house keys. I was all ready to be on the kids' side. But what the hell man? She's just being invasive. Not the asshole. If she was coming over. Eating. Maybe taking a nap. Fine. But to be going through your things specifically. Creepy. Change the locks too in case there are extra keys. Layla moved out. She does not have the right to just walk in any time and go through things that are not hers. If the aunt thinks that is acceptable then let Layla do it at her house. Nata, I'm wondering if just setting a simple boundary of not coming over unannounced would have work. I mean, she's not your deal. She's your stepdaughter. That being said, you are entitled to have privacy and security in your home, but it sounds like she doesn't like or want you around, which is something that should be looked into and discussed. Not the asshole her being there before you does not give her a right to go through your things or come over without telling anyone. Not the asshole, she abused her privilege to have the house key. I have had keys to my parents for decades as I visit several times a week and they also have a key to my house for emergencies. When my brother asked my mom for a key, she asked him if she had a key to his house, he didn't ask again. The funny thing is, my parents don't go to visit anyone so it wouldn't be a big deal if they had a key to his house but he basically refused. He wanted access but refused to give same access to his place. Not the asshole and Layla is downright creepy. Not the asshole wait you are paying rent? That weird thing notwithstanding, she has zero right to go through your things, and I am certain had you been caught going through her things all hell would have broken loose. Your husband agreed with you. Auntie has been needs the whole story before she interferes. Not the asshole. Layla has an issue. What? Don't know. Consider mental health issues or addiction issues. At 22, does she still have access to benefits through a parent? BTW, change you locks. Not the asshole. I have keys to my in-laws and my mom's houses but I would never think of using them while they weren't home without their permission. My in-laws don't have any cameras but my mom does have a doorbell camera that I got for her. Layla is an adult who lives on her own. She no longer has any claim to your house. Not the asshole. She didn't respect the actual inhabitants of the house. If she really didn't have ill intent she would have messaged one or both of you and said hey, I'm coming by to look for my ex or I'm in the area and I need to pee, I'm coming over to use the bathroom so I don't have to go in a gas station or even I'm feeling homesick and I'm coming by this afternoon to lay on the couch. Communication makes all the difference. Definitely not the asshole my kids and I are super close. They know my home will always be their home too. But they never go through my things. Or go in my house without telling me. In fact my daughter stopped to use my bathroom once and still shot me a text and a pic of my pups something else is up with this girl. It is her home but not her house. Unless she pays the mortgage. Am I the asshole?
for choosing my son's friends over family? I have a 16-year-old son, Nate. He's been in this friend group of five including him since they were about eight years old. We're white, and so are two of the other boys, but one is Middle Eastern and another is South Asian. This is relevant. It was Thanksgiving the other day and the two boys that aren't white don't celebrate the holiday so I always invite them to ours. They usually come and it's always great fun for the boys, especially since Nate's cousins are either much older or much younger. Like the past few years, I invited them, and they both came. My mom also brought her new boyfriend. I've met him before and he seemed fine. He saw the boys in the living room and immediately went now I know those two young men aren't yours I explained to him that they're Nate's friends. He whispered something to my mom but she just walked away. Okay whatever. He stood by the boys the whole time but they didn't seem to care and made conversation with him. I relaxed and left to do something. Twenty minutes later, Nate comes up to me saying that grandma's boyfriend is being weird so I go see what's happening and he's interrogating the other boys about their true intentions with Nate and the rest of us. One of the boys jokingly goes damn you caught us which sent him spiraling. I interrupted and dragged him to the kitchen where I told him that he needs to leave. He was being pretty racist. He was surprised and I'm sure he was expecting me to at least give him another chance but I've read enough stories to know that he'd say something even shittier later. Besides, I care about those boys way more than I care about him. He called my mom over and she begged me to give him another chance, she'll make sure he keeps mouth shut. I told her I'm sorry, but I couldn't care less. She got extremely upset and said that I should send the boys home if they're so uncomfortable plus it's a family holiday. I just shrugged but she just got annoyed and said if he leaves, she leaves too. I did hesitate but ultimately decided she can leave too. Mom didn't take that well and said her boyfriend was just saying what they all were thinking and it's about time those boys stopped infiltrating our family time. They left and I was still fairly confident until one aunt and her daughters said that it's true that they and others don't like that these two boys are at every Thanksgiving sometimes Christmas and it's a little suspicious. But it's not a race thing. They said it was pretty terrible of me to choose random teenage boys over family but I told them they were welcome to leave as well and they shut up. I'd kiff that's what I'm doing but apparently many of them feel this way. Am I the asshole? For choosing these boys over family? Mom won't talk to me either. Not the asshole your mom's BF was so out of line, and it was good for those boys and your own son to see an adult stand up for what's right even if means grandma was offended and left. If you had let him stay, it would have shown you condone what he said. Does your aunt have any legitimate claims against the boys aside from their mere presence at holiday gatherings? We don't get to choose our blood relatives but we get to choose our family. These boys are so lucky to have you. Thank you for opening your home and heart to them. Not the asshole. This is the hill to die on. Your son's friend group is long established. They will mean more for his future than any of these other people blood kin or not. Stand your ground. Good for you. Not the asshole. It's your home so you get to choose who stays and who goes. Playing the because we're family card doesn't wash when the person you're seeing when is a racist are. It's a family holiday meanwhile I bet no one is is offering to host so that they get to control who gets invited. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Your mom's new boyfriend is not your family. She's choosing a racist over her family. It's appalling that your aunt and her daughters agree with the boyfriend's sentiment. Not the asshole. Your family stinks. My siblings and I always brought friends home who had nowhere to go for the holidays, a lot of them international students or people who'd been rejected by their parents, and they were always welcomed by everyone. Well, whoever your mom is sleeping with that week isn't your family either. Your son's friends have been with him for half his life and would be there for him and you as well, when the rest of the cousins would bail out on you. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. 
The only thing that seems suspicious is their claim this isn't about race. You sound like a great example for your son, don't let your family pressure you into compromising your character. Not the asshole boys that have grown up beside my son and are among his closest friends are not random young men they are our extended family of choice. It's a pity you all chose mom's racist bed warmer of the hour over DS and his friends, but you are no longer welcome here until you get your heads straight. Not the asshole. I'm sorry that your family is racist. Good on you for standing up for those kids. Not the asshole. Anyone who insults my guests in my house isn't welcome. Not the asshole. What I find interesting about this is that, out of all the holidays, Thanksgiving is non-denominational. It's literally a harvest festival and all cultures have them. Sharing the bounty with friends, family, and neighbors is literally the point of Thanksgiving. And your family is trying to turn it into something it's not by being racist assholes. Now you know why your mom was so comfortable being with a bigot. Cause she is one. Not the asshole, you didn't choose the boys over family, you chose the boys over racists. Good on you, I'm sure they will remember your kindness. Friends become family all there is to it you didn't choose his friends over your family. You choose his chosen brothers over racists who claim to be family based on blood only. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. I always brought home friends for holidays and my grandma was super welcoming. What does she even mean by suspicious? They're doing a long con so they can steal the turkey? Not the asshole. You can say your mom's boyfriend played stupid games and won stupid prizes or that he fed around and found out, or whatever favorite Reddit phrase you want to use. It is your house and those boys were your guests at your invitation, and nobody has a right to behave that way toward them. Your family will keep trying to say it's not a race thing, but remind them that it absolutely is. First of all, mom's boyfriend is not family, and at this point he's hardly a friend, so you did not choose friends over family, you chose long-time friends over racist near stranger. Second, I have found that a lot of times blood relatives are not the ones who make the holidays but are the ones who ruin the holidays. Who you host at your Thanksgiving table is your business and at your invitation and anyone who does not appreciate your guest list should decline your invite and dine elsewhere. I'm sorry you had to find out that your family are racists. Not the asshole. Not the asshole, no. I find if someone says it's not race related when it comes to a complaint it usually is. ETA clarity. Not the asshole sorry that you are finding out your family is full of racists. Not the asshole and I'm a little freaked out about your family. These are 16 year old boys who you've known for years and obviously are close to. Why would it be weird to include them in holidays? I know a lot of people who invite friends over for different holidays. But it seems like majority of your family are racist and I'm sorry that you and all the boys had to experience that. You're a goddess and your family are words I can't say here. You keep doing the found family thing and enjoying having happy kids and happy activities and let your bio family go do whatever they are going to do. Don't change. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Allow me to reframe you didn't chose boys over family, you chose children you've known for almost a decade over a racist aka your mom's new boyfriend. You seem like a wonderful person. Nter, end of story. Not the asshole. And I applaud you for taking care of those two boys and making them feel welcome in your home. Your mom's boyfriend says a lot about her in my opinion. It seems some of her true, racist colors are starting to arise. Good luck cop. Not the asshole. Good for you for standing up for these young me, they now know you have their backs and will come to you if something is bad, and they need an adult. Shame on your mom and her boyfriend, and shame on the aunt and anyone else who had anything but good thoughts about these long time friends. Behavior over blood relations. It seems that the 16 year olds and you were the only mature people there. Not the asshole of course. Your family are despicable. 
Am I the asshole? For refusing my sister's offer to pay for the gender reveal scan? So my girlfriend F26 and I am 29 found out in August that we were going to be parents to our first child. Generally, everyone was very happy about the news. However because of the shock I felt at the time it wasn't planned, I called my mother for reassurance and it helped. She wasn't happy I told her over a phone call which I understand and am likely an R for. I apologized and we put it behind us. My sister has been supportive, she helped us move to a new house, wanted to take my partner out baby shopping in a few weeks. However, my mother was less helpful. We had a FaceTimed mid-August about housing options, then my mother randomly asked me about if my partner was on the pill. I said yes and I've seen her take it, and she asked if I was sure. Almost like she was insinuating that I was baby trapped. I have had worries about my sister. I'm happy she's excited but I feel sometimes she's too much. She was talking about having the baby every weekend so we could do stuff as a couple, and I said we have to consider both families. She was also concerned about us moving a bit closer to my girlfriend's family than mine. She said I wouldn't get as much support and questioned the support from my partners as her mother lives two hours away. I said she comes down every weekend to look after her mother with dementia, we'll be fine. My sister offered to pay for our gender reveal scan. We both thought this was a lovely gesture and said yes. My sister understandably wanted to come because she's paying for it. My sister told me that the one she was booking allowed up to five people to come and suggested we bring my mum along. I then said if she's coming, then my girlfriend's mum should come too. She disagreed because it's the only involvement they'll have during the pregnancy and my girlfriend's family will be at other events. We said it's not about who we're including, it's about having support during a personal appointment, and my girlfriend doesn't want only all my family there. My mum previously said either it's just my family or no scan. I said fine, we'll pay for it ourselves. My sister then messaged my girlfriend to explain her reasoning which left her in tears. She also said my family like to do things separate and they're a bit antisocial. They think meeting my girlfriend's mum at the scan will be awkward. We think this kind of reasoning is selfish and not putting our wishes first. My mum and sister are getting me to understand their reasoning. I do understand it, I just don't agree with it. My girlfriend's mum isn't bothered by them not wanting her there, just more by how it's affected us. She told me not to worry about them and hugged me. She said she's happy to pay for it and for me to invite whoever I want. This is a post here because despite many agreements about our side of things, I have doubt because my sister was going to pay for it. And I was considering my dad but my girlfriend's mum believes that would anger my family. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. Any help or gifts with strings attached. Don't do it. Never ever. So absolutely not the asshole. This wasn't an offer of a gift it was a power play. You said no to your sister's conditions, because she made your pregnant partner cry. Good for you keep setting boundaries. Congratulations and best wishes. Not the asshole. Your mom chewed you out for calling her with the baby news, I was already scratching my head at that, and you seem to accept that makes you an asshole. With crap like that permeating your life, it's no wonder you're on here for the rest of this. Your mom and sisters sound like real pieces of work I'm sorry to say. Your mom goes on to insinuate you were baby trapped, then her and your sister go on to say only your side of the family should be in on gender scan? It doesn't matter who's paying for it, everything regarding your life is for you to decide who's included. Your girlfriend's mom sounds like truly a gem by the way. Not the asshole. I personally wouldn't accept their offers to pay for things like this moving forward either because it seems like they're going to use these things as control over you and your girlfriend and will throw these nice gestures in your face when they don't get their own way. Not the asshole this sounds like your mom and sister are making this pregnancy and baby about them. It's absolutely not. They are not the parents. Not the asshole. 
Pregnancy is not a bloody group project your family are way too involved in this and creating drama for no reason. Not the asshole. It's not really a gift if it comes attached with a bunch of conditions. They're using this to exclude your wife's family for whatever reason. You're better off paying for the scan yourself so you aren't pressured into doing what they want. Not the asshole start setting boundaries now, because if you don't, your sister and mother are going to walk all over you especially your girlfriend. Not the asshole. Shut this shit down now. You are not entering into custody agreement with your sister. It is not her baby. I'm sorry, but it's time to set up a heck of a lot of boundaries now before the next argument of who's going to be in the room for birth. Your family is overstepping a lot. Protect her, your GF, the mother of your child. I think she needs to block your family on her phone. Your sister is being manipulative and making a pregnant woman cry. I'm wondering about all the demands once the baby is here and shuddering. This baby is not only yours but a part of GF family. Not the asshole. It seems your family has some control issues. Your sister only offered to pay for the scan so she could hold it over your head so you do as she says, i.e. it was help with strings attached. I would be wary of any offer of help from them because it will come with strings attached. Look at how your mill reacted when you talked to her about it and compare it to how your family behaves when it comes to the situation at hand. Not the asshole. Keep siding with your partner, and start going lower contact with your mom and sister. They are starting to get controlling, which will only get worse after the baby is born. Set boundaries now, do not let them overstep, keep them back. Do not let your sister or mother have the baby to stay with them alone, ever. I would not trust them. Not the asshole the anatomy scan is usually such a big milestone because it's also the anomaly scan. It's not just a fun ultrasound, it's a serious medical appointment, unless you're intending to just go to an ultrasound boutique and do extra scans. Regardless of which one you're doing, your girlfriend is the pregnant one and she needs to be comfortable with who's going to be there. Your sister controlling who can and can't go like it's her appointment instead of a gift of payment is absurd. Not the asshole. A lot of your post is about what your sister wants. Does she want the baby? Yikes your family is bonkers get away from them as far away as you can manage. They're stomping on boundaries, your sister is plotting to practically commandeer your baby, your mother wants the baby retroactively blamed away and none of them seem to care about your feelings, or your girlfriends, at all. Block your ditzy relatives. You're not the asshole here. Not the asshole and good that you stood up for your core family your mother's and sister's behavior is not at all okay, they treat your GF as an object incubator by inserting themselves into a doctor's appointment and deciding who else can or cannot attend the spectacle. Also, paying for something with such conditions is not a gift. A gift would be paying for it and letting you decide if, and whom you wanted to be there. Keep putting your foot down and set hard boundaries now it's only going to get way worse once baby is born. Not the asshole and to be honest your side of the family sounds pretty toxic to be honest. I know that sounds dramatic, but consider aside from all the rest there's absolutely no way that your mother should be upset about hearing about the pregnancy over the phone. Absolutely nothing wrong with that in the slightest. Yet she was apparently upset at you. And just that little thing has you thinking that you're possibly an asshole. Sounds to me like you've been wrong your whole life and are constantly having to apologize. Does your sister ever do things wrong? Could she be considered a golden child by any chance? Not the asshole. Your family are trying to push your girlfriend's family out of the picture. Not the asshole. But what I just read was extremely concerning. Can your sister not have children and really wants them? I just super possessive vibes from her about the unborn baby. And the fact they are already acting like this is super strange. Luckily your partner's mum sounds super cool and like she has what's best for you and your partner at the forefront of her mind. I feel like there is more to this than your mum and sister are letting on its really strange behavior especially offering to take the baby every weekend. Am I the asshole? 
for asking my GF's father his blessing to propose. Okay, first of all, sorry for any mistakes, English is a second language and I'm still processing what just happened. So, I've been dating my girlfriend for a bit more than a year. She's the perfect girl for me, she's hot, caring and smart, and we both love each other very much. I've been thinking about proposing for a while, my girlfriend is almost done with school and I have a good job with a lot of savings. Since we are visiting her hometown for the week, thought this week would be a good moment to ask her father for his blessing. I've only met with her family a couple of times, since they live in another city, but they never seemed to have a problem with me. Her father is pretty easy going, so while we don't have much in common, I wasn't really scared of his reaction, only a bit nervous. This afternoon, while my GF was out with old friends, I sat down with him and asked him if I'd have his blessing to marry his daughter. He looked really awkward and confused, and asked me a couple of times if I was being serious. I explained that I was, that I loved his daughter very much and would make sure she never needs anything. He said something along the lines of whoa, I don't know what to say, I was not expecting that. We were silent for a bit and he left the room. I was disappointed to say the least, but still had hopes to convince him. My girlfriend came back soon after, and received a phone call from her mother, who told her I asked GF's dad for his blessing. My girlfriend was really angry at me for asking her dad instead of her and that doing so is sexist which is stupid because the point was to ask her dad to propose, not to marry her by force, saying she was absolutely not ready for marriage, wasn't even considering it because she thought it was way too early in our relationship after more than a year. She said she felt humiliated in front of her parents and now she left to sleep at her mother's tonight, leaving me alone with her father who's been avoiding me since our conversation. I don't understand what happened. I'm really hurt by her reaction and the way she viewed the possibility of marrying me as completely absurd. I'm really angry and confused at her parents for telling her about my plans instead of letting me propose how I intended. You're the asshole. All of this could have been avoided by having an adult conversation with your partner about future plans. Some people still like the whole asking dad for a blessing permission things, I find it outdated and it seems so does your girlfriend, something that would have come up if marriage was at all discussed in the year you've been together, along with a potential timeline of when it might be appropriate to propose. You're the asshole for all the reasons already stated. But also, even in this post, you called your girlfriend's concerns over sexism stupid. That's how you talk about the woman you want to marry? She's 22 and you've only been dating a little over a year. OFC she's not ready for marriage no hate to those who marry young. You're the asshole. You're the asshole not necessarily because of the asking for permission stuff. You're the asshole because you clearly neglected any discussion with her about this and bulldozed further with your perspective on the whole thing she wasn't even thinking about marriage if it had talked about this you would have known this now some cultures women would want some sort of blessing from the parents either before or after the proposal. Again if you had talked about this with your gf then you would have known that is was an inappropriate thing to do. You're the asshole. You're just pretending to not understand why it's sexist right? There's no way you actually don't understand why acting like your girlfriend is owned by her father is sexist. All I'm seeing is me 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 me. You aren't stopping here to think about her feelings at all, only your own. You're the asshole. You're allowed to be disappointed. But you seem to be ignoring all of her feelings by rebutting with what you think is a logical point instead of caring about whether she feels ready or listened to. She is upset because you did not discuss this with her first. You just assumed it could be worked out between her father and you and that leaves her out of the decision making process. You don't know her parents all that well, yet you talked to them about this instead of even floating the idea by her. It may be a cultural thing where you are from, but she is an adult and should have been given a clue you were thinking about this. ETA you're the asshole. She deserves some agency in this. You're the asshole. 
With the next girl, try to treat her like an equal. X200B. I'm really angry and confused at her parents for telling her about my plans instead of letting me propose how I intended, they did the only reasonable thing, and handled you are well. Bro one year is a very short amount of time. Especially if you never even discussed marriage. Stages normally are dating for a while, living together, maybe get a pet and then discuss what marriage would be like. It's not sexist to seek a blessing as again it's still her choice to say yes but clearly you missed a big mark if everyone was surprised by your ask. You're the asshole. This was sexist and poorly conceived. The proposal happens after you have already discussed and agreed that marriage is in your shared future it is not the entree to that discussion. You are also the asshole for being unable to admit that you are wrong when you literally solicited opinions about your actions. Looks like this woman is getting smart to the kind of person you are. The fact that this came as a surprise to you kinda proves that you don't know either her or her family well enough for marriage. Sorry dude, you're the asshole on this one. Is this post actually real? Op was going to propose never having discussed marriage with an attitude of she can just say no if she's not feeling it. Not to mention the general tone of sexism and being mad at the parents for his lack of due diligence. Info what culture are you from? Dating for a year isn't really that long of a time, her mom helped her dodge a bullet. Judging from her reaction you never discussed the idea of marriage with her yet, and most likely haven't talked about your future plans and if they align or not. If you can't see why you were wrong then sorry buddy you might be single soon. You're the asshole. Dude. You have been together for only a year. Never talked about your future or marriage. The hell did you expect? You're the asshole. Information have the two of you ever discussed marriage? Has she ever stated a desire to get married or what she wants her future to look like? These are important conversations to have before a proposal. You're the asshole. You never even discussed marriage with her before asking her dad if it's okay if you propose to his just makes her sound like property? You weren't even aware that she had an opinion and feelings about such an outdated idea, you didn't even know she wasn't ready for marriage. You are either a terrible communicator or you don't really care how she feels, just so. Am I the asshole? For not wanting to engage with a parent that has an unleashed dog. I 35m go on morning walks every day with my one year old son. 
There is a trail that runs through the neighborhood and park that has tons of foot traffic. Another mom with a kid around the same age is frequently on walks with her kid and dog. However the dog is unleashed. I've noticed her try to talk to me before, but I've always kept my head down. I usually nod, but never have a conversation. There is a leash law in effect and I think anyone that unleashes their dog is an asshole. I don't say anything because the dog isn't misbehaving, I just choose not to engage with her. However, this morning, she stopped me and tried to talk to me. Saying it looks like our kids are around the same age. We made a little small talk, I was not rude, but short with my answers and the first opportunity to get out of the conversation I took. This is when she goes, is there an issue between us? She goes on to say I ignore her and she's trying to be friend standards, I'm talking long term skin cancer prevention. Not the asshole, it's not like you got her makeup or Botox. Nah, but as someone who has received skincare products from her aunt for years, it gets sold fast. Don't make it a habit. Not the asshole, skincare products are just cleanser and moisturizer night cream is a moisturizer with a slightly different formula than day cream. The purpose is to keep the skin clean and toned and moisturized. Not all skincare routines are based on anti-aging and sunscreen is essential for everyone. It's not a bad idea for you and your sister to talk to 13 year about your different views of skincare, because it is important to encourage teenagers to avoid the pressure of false beauty standards. Nah it's a sweet gesture but if your niece did not express any interest in this stuff it could seem like you are pressuring her to perform beauty, or making a comment on her appearance. Teenagers are really vulnerable and insecure, especially girls. The beauty industry is a billion dollar industry relying on exploitation of people in securities, and I can see why your sister wants to protect her daughter from that as long as possible, and let her just enjoy being a kid. Yes sunscreen is important but lots of skincare is unnecessary and expensive, and elaborate skincare routines are marketing hype. Info did your niece want a skincare routine for her birthday? I mean it is good to get in the habit of maintaining your skin health but if that's not something she's interested in I can see why your sister got huffy. I'll say nah to an extent. It feels like a very gendered gift girls getting feminine products at a certain age versus boys getting cool books or toys. At school we used to do Christmas gift exchanges and it suckled when I'd get a candle or perfume because I'm a fab. It's different if your niece has expressed interest in skincare, though that's usually not what 13 year olds are thinking of. In regards to sunscreen the focus of sunscreen should never be it prevents aging, that's extremely harmful for their future mental health. The focus should be on preventing cancer. 13 is too young for sunscreen? Does your sister like the idea of skin cancer? Not the asshole. I know how Opie and her sister feels about it but how does the niece feel? Did she ever show any interest in beauty care products? That's important info in deciding if Opie was an R. Oh for crying out loud. Not the asshole. Your sister overreacted to an innocently and good naturedly given gift. You weren't shaming her into using age defying products. And night cream isn't poison people. It's moisturizer. If there are any ingredients in it that she's sensitive to then her mom can remove it from the basket and take it for herself after saying thank you for such a thoughtful gift. We will definitely have fun with the mask. Also, at 13 she probably doesn't even know everything she may be allergic to and the only way to find out is to have an allergic reaction to something. I actually laughed after reading this and thought, really? Now the sunscreen was a good gift, the other stuff was a little insensitive, but I think your sister overreacted, a bit, too. Now your sister is right, even though it sounds like she's overreacted a bit, you should have checked what you were getting with her first. Beauty products are a whole toxic minefield I think maybe even more so in Korean culture. And it's sensible for your sister to not want her kid getting into that at 13. Note I can understand being a little anxious about night cream because 99 of those that I see push the anti-aging idea. 
But sunscreen? That's not anti-aging that's anti-cancer. My mom didn't wear sunscreen when she was young cause it was nothing and she has had to have at least 10 spots removed from her face and back. And each time it's scary because we don't know how deep it's going to go. I know a woman slightly older than my mother who practically has no nose left because of all the skin cancer they've had to remove from it. And you know. What else helps against skin cancer besides sunscreen? Healthy moisturized skin. Now I've done similar but only animal face masks and forcing sunscreen on my nieces. My sister was fine with both because one was cute and one stops skin cancer. I actually agree with your sis that night cream is too much at her age because her skin simply does not need it and too many chemicals are bad for young skin. I totally get your intentions but your sister also has a point on the night cream. That all said, sunscreen is not a beauty product. Every single person on this planet should be putting some form on every day. Skin cancer does not discriminate in any way and it is a big deal. Not the asshole, but just to give you some feedback, when I was that age I had horrible acne. It was purely hormonal and no skincare routine would ever have been able to improve it. Even dermatologist prescribed stuff failed, aside from oral medication. Anyways, during that time well-meaning aunts would always give me skincare items and gift certificates for facials etc. It really made me feel self-conscious about my skin. And it felt like they thought that my looks were the most important thing about me. My personal opinion is 13 is too young for night cream or serums. A nice moisturizer, cleanser and sunscreen is enough. If I were the mum, I would warn my sister too but I wouldn't get mad over something this easy. So, I can see you came from a good place. So not the R. You did what you think is best. Nah, but you might want to back down on this subject since she's him mum. I wish I had started at that age. I really do. Info, is your niece interested in skincare or just beauty and makeup? Because if she is it's a fun gift, if she very clearly isn't it's an insult. Not the asshole yeah you could have consulted her about the night cream serum but face masks are mostly harmless and everyone should wear sunscreen on their face every day regardless of if they care about beauty or not. She can give it to her kid and leave the night cream out. The rest of the stuff sounds like it'd be fun for teens and she probably hopefully won't get carried away with it. Nah, did your niece ever express that she wanted this though? Because if someone got me skincare without me asking for it I'd definitely take it as a comment on my skin acne, which isn't what a 13 year old or anyone needs for their birthday. Not the asshole, I wish I had an aunt who did this for me. When I was 13, I had awful skin because I had no idea what to do for skincare and that would have given me a nudge in the right direction. Sunscreen is a beauty standard? I thought it was to not die. Not the asshole. Definitely not the asshole. Good skin care should be something you try to instill at a young age so it's not such a hard habit to make later in life. It'd be different if you did it and told her that how badly she needed it to stay young but you didn't. Not to mention she's 13 and is apt to get acne it would be super beneficial for her to get a jump on skin care to help with that. Helps her build healthy habits and keeps her from potentially getting bullied over acne. I see no issue, not the asshole. I see it as a fun way of ensuring good skin habits at an early age. You're the asshole because you are in fact giving her that gift with the hope she will be pressured into beauty standards and anti-aging routine at young age. You're the asshole. Women spend entirely too much money on all the various spells and whistles of skincare and you just gave your niece the entrance drug, helping to develop the belief that she needs all that stuff. Sunscreen yes, but not the rest. You're the asshole it's a weird ass birthday gift for a 13 year old. Would you have given the same thing if she was a boy or would you have given him something actually fun? The only thing she needs from this is sunscreen, which is still a weird ass birthday gift. Am I the asshole? For uninviting my mom to my wedding after pretending to sleep at my bachelorette party? My mom and I have
Am I the asshole? For not gifting my sister a second wedding gift. Two years ago my sister married her high school love after they were together for about eight years. For their wedding I bought them a pretty expensive couch 7.6k dollar because it was on their wedding wish list for the closer family. Back then she was absolutely stunned by the gift and said it was the best one she got. However, they got divorced around half a year later and I still have no clue why. But after a year break, six months ago they got back together and a while ago they decided that they want to marry again. And again in a church with a big wedding like the first time. I have nothing against that but today she sent me and my family another wish list for this wedding and my family, who all gifted her stuff worth around $500,600 last time, don't have a problem with that. But since my gift was more than 10x expensive than that I informed her that she's not getting another one unless it's a gift card about $100. She completely freaked out and said that's her wedding and how I could be so selfish. My family is on her side so I don't know if he am the asshole or not. Not the asshole at all. She's not even marrying someone new. She's lucky you're giving up another Saturday to attend a second wedding for her doomed toxic marriage. The way you told her could have been more tactful and diplomatic but she can whine and cry about it on her 7k couch how she's not still just immensely grateful for a 7k couch is beyond me not the asshole. Not the asshole I'd get her a nice throw blanket accent pillows to go on the exorbitantly priced couch you bought for her last time. Add a note hoping she is still enjoying her once in a lifetime gift. Sweet Jesus, how entitled. She's lucky to get the $100 gift card. She already got $7,600 from you for marrying the exact same dude. Not the asshole. Did her marriage not work the first time because she's super entitled? Newsflash people don't generally get gifts for a second wedding. It sounds like she's just looking to turn this into a gift grab. Don't buy into it. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. The greed is strong in this one. She's marrying the same guy. I wouldn't give any gift whatsoever. You've already gifted for this marriage. Lather, rinse, repeat doesn't call for a new round of gifts. Not the asshole. Honestly, Grubbing for gifts for a second wedding unless you literally need to restock a kitchen is pretty tacky. She's remarrying the same person WTF? Not the asshole. The selfish one appears to be your sister. Not the asshole. Sister is being crazy entitled. Hold firm this time and the marriage s as well. Tell her you are still paying for the couch. Not the asshole. You were super generous the first time. Not the asshole. Tell her if she doesn't want to take a marriage seriously and treat it as dating and breaking up then you don't have to take her ceremony seriously either. I would say not the asshole, but I don't do wedding gifts for second wedding at all, but especially not for a remarriage. I'm not gifting someone something because they can't make up their mind. Like seriously, 8 years together divorced before they even make it 2 years, just to get married to each other again after a year? Lol no, that's utterly ridiculous I'm not giving a gift to that. Not the asshole she's marrying the exact same guy for the second time? Ridiculous gift grab. Send the gift card and avoid the wedding. Or avoid the wedding and the gift card. Not the asshole. She's being ridiculously entitled. Not the asshole. You spend nearly 8k on a wedding gift. Flushed face, holy. Well if she's not happy with the gift card, I have a suggestion. A gift card for 10x marriage counseling sessions. She will explode, but at least you spent more than $100, smiley face, smiley face, smiley face. Not the asshole. Tell her you're not supposed to get gifts when you remarry, especially not when it's between the same couple. If they and your family keep acting out, I would recommend having something important to attend to that day. I at least wouldn't want to come after that. Not the asshole. 
you're never obligated to give expensive gifts, and given that they choose to have a second wedding doesn't mean they can act entitled to equal gifts. You shouldn't have said anything, and just given her $100 and a card. I can't believe that you're considering giving her anything. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Just send a congratulations on your wedding card with a business card from a divorce attorney enclosed. Not the asshole. She is definitely being an entitled diva. I wouldn't even bother going to her sham wedding. Not the asshole. WTF? Greedy enough? Not the asshole. Second wedding in as many years and she expects gifts. Even expecting family's attendance is a stretch. I'm trying to figure out how they even managed to get legally divorced and back together and remarried that fast. Not the asshole but I would get something small from the list, something you wouldn't mind giving them for any other occasion. See if there is something on her list that's around $100, instead of just giving a gift card. Not the asshole. Are they getting married just because of need of new expensive furniture or what? Smiley face. Not the asshole. Your first gift was hugely generous and she's being selfish and entitled. I think it was tacky for her to gift grab like this from her family and tacky to the 10th degree to do it again. Even for a perfect angel, I would not get a big gift for a second wedding to the same person. I'd do a $50 gift card to a store and call it a day. However, since your sister is being such a brat, I would get her a card only. Or make a donation in their name. My response would be along the lines of I only give gifts for odd number weddings, so I'm going to wait for your third. Or I only give gifts if you're marrying someone different. Or even I gave you an $8,000 couch for your first wedding, that should be enough gift for several more weddings. Not the asshole seems like your sis is getting married again for the gifts lmao. So pathetic. I wouldn't even expect gifts for a second wedding especially to the same man. They need lots of couples therapy. Not the asshole I expect a third wedding is in the books. Not the asshole. Gifts are just that. Gifts. And you were more than generous the first wedding. But for any gift you are never entitled to it. More importantly, I would be concerned for your family to send more gifts. Something about receiving a bunch of expensive gifts after getting married, separating, and then getting back six months later seems fishy to me. And for her getting that upset, makes me believe she has other motives rather than just getting remarried. Not the asshole. It's a wedding, the start of her remarried life with her husband. You send out invites for a wedding. An invite is neither a summons nor an invoice. If you receive gifts, receive them with thanks. If not, let it go. You gave your sister an astonishingly generous gift the first time she got married. It is outrageous that she thinks she can demand more. Were the other family members hoping you were going to make up for the fact they are not bringing $500 gifts again? I have a hard time believing everyone is planning to refurnish their house again after only two years. Your sister is likely in for a surprise if she thinks everything will be exactly the same as last time. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Gifts are called gifts for a reason they are not a right or an entitlement she's incredibly selfish to expect you to cough up anything especially when she's marrying the same guy. I'm sorry but a second wedding to the same person doesn't count not a chance. Get her an etiquette book. Everyone I've seen says wedding gifts are not mandatory. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Tell her the couch is your wedding present for all of her weddings to this man. At most, look up a couch origami, and do one in the same color as the real deal. There, the loving couple and your enabling family can all choke on it. Not the asshole this may be an unpopular opinion but I think your sister's second wedding to the same guy is way tacky. She has her nerve expecting gifts a second time. Not the asshole. Get your entitled sister a boomerang and tell her that it's a metaphor of her marriage. Not the asshole. A $100 gift is a very generous gift. You went over and above the first time. She can calm down. 
Am I the asshole? For not helping my pregnant co-worker? I F27 work in a team of five. One of the members, let's call her Ava is pregnant. Our company allows only six months paid maternity leave. Ava has been having a rough pregnancy and has been ordered bed rest by her doctor. She is only in her second trimester. But she has already been calling in sick a lot and has extinguished her paid sick leaves. Her and her husband is renting and are not doing great financially. They need her income for the next five months till baby is due and she can officially go on paid maternity leave. Our boss asked us to figure it out. We cannot actually do our work remotely. To enable her to work remotely, we will have to dedicate hours of our work time working on behalf of her physically and gathering info she requires. It will be very difficult to do and to complete our own work, we will have to work additional hours. Our company don't pay overtime. All others in my team already have family and kids. I am the only one without kids or as others said, responsibilities. They asked me to do the additional work to help Ava out. I said no. I sympathize with Ava. But she made a decision to have a baby and I cannot work extra hours every day to help her. They said I was being an R for not helping. I told them if they cared so much, let us all help together. Then everyone will fewer extra hours to work. They complained they cannot since they have family to get back to and responsibilities. I said I have my own life too. Either we all help together, taking turns or we don't help. I am not going to sacrifice all my days for her. None of them want to help and I let our boss know. He hired a temporary replacement for Ava. Ava and rest of my colleague are calling me one now. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole and not your problem. It is the boss's problem to make sure the work is done and the company's problem to make sure they hire enough staffing to complete all the work. Surprise surprise. When the employees refused to take a bunch of extra work for no pay, they were forced to hire another staff member, which is what they should have done all along. I kind of feel like work is TA for putting you in this position. Not the asshole, but your employer and co-workers sure as hell are. Also, if you're getting paid hourly, you cannot be required to work without compensation. Not the asshole. Just because you don't have children doesn't mean you don't have responsibilities and a life outside of your job. It's unfortunate she's been put on bed rest so early into her pregnancy, especially when they should be saving for a baby, but that shouldn't affect you and your life. Good luck. Not the asshole the extra work needs to be divided evenly, not dumped on one employee. Your co-workers are being asses. Not the asshole. This would be discrimination case if you'd be forced to work extra on the ground of not having kids. Tell your boss or HR about retaliation after your refusal to work for yourself and extra for Ava. Not the asshole. Your bosses and so are your co-workers. If somebody can't do their cop, boss should sort it out not expect the employees to fix the issue. And your co-workers can't dump the extra work on you because you don't have kids. Not the asshole as a manager, I would never expect my team to work overtime daily for someone unpaid. It's the company who's at fault, not you. Not the asshole. Your boss has actually created the problem by trying to pass it on to all of you as a group. Any issue is between Ava and the company and none of you should have been drawn in. You also were fully entitled to say no to having to do anything extra. Not the asshole. You're right and I'm glad to see someone standing up for themselves over this. Childless people aren't lesser. I have zero respect for people who just expect someone to pick up all the slack when they aren't willing to do the same. What makes them think you're up for working that much overtime when they refuse to do the same? Not the asshole but your co-workers are. When your boss said figure it out, he pretty much meant for you to do her work for her. Welcome to the world of the childless employee in today's workplace. Your life is not as important as anyone else's because you do not have children, the only thing that is of any value in the eyes of many people with children. You are lesser than them. It's not your obligation to do her work for her for any reason, 
including whatever her personal issues are. Not the asshole. Not the asshole and your boss was way over the line asking any of you to pick up the slack. Your time is no less valuable than your co-workers. Boss did what he should have done in the first place and hired a temp. And as an aside, wow, six months maternity? Fully paid? That's amazing. Not the asshole. Entitled parents are the worst. You 100 did the right thing, and eventually so did your boss. Obviously he was hoping not to have to hire a temp, but that's a management issue. Stand your ground both now and in the future with this, they aren't your kids, they aren't your problem, and not having kids in no way makes your time less valuable to you. Not the asshole. Your free time is being deemed as less important as your co-workers for an arbitrary reason. I'd imagine the only way forward now is to collaborate as a team and complete it together, or personally do nothing at all. Not the asshole. It's very unreasonable to expect you to work for free every day for the next five months. Not the asshole and you are exactly right. It's not your responsibility that another co-worker is having health issues, regardless of what is causing them. Not the asshole. Your colleague's request was unreasonable. It's not your responsibility to cover for Ava's absence, especially if it means working extra hours without compensation. Your boss should have hired temporary help from the beginning to manage the workload. Your decision to not sacrifice your personal time for this situation is entirely justified. Your colleagues and Ava should understand that it's the company's responsibility to ensure the work is managed properly. Not the asshole. If you all were to share the load, that would be one thing. But you not having kids doesn't mean your free time is less valuable. Ava is not exactly entitled for wanting sick leave if she is on bed rest. Heck where I live paid sick leave is the norm. The land of the free, where you can go bankrupt because you are ill or god forbid pregnant. Obviously OP is still not the asshole. Not the asshole. People with children always act as though people without them have no obligations on their time. It's kind of demented since many people put off having children specifically because of those other obligations. But even if you didn't, the co-worker relationship does not entitle someone to demand you do their work for them. Not the asshole. You were willing to help, just not being the only one who helped. Being child-free doesn't mean being life-free. Not the asshole. Pregnancy is a choice. If you're to do Ava's work for her then you should get her pay in addition to your own. Your boss made the right call in hiring a temporary replacement. Your co-workers need to start giving your lifestyle choices the same respect that they demand you give theirs. Your company only allows six months paid maternity leave? Excuse me while I cry in American. And no, not the asshole. Not the asshole. They were trying to shove all of the work onto you, and you didn't let them. There's no good reason for you to work extra for no pay just so Ava can work from home. Your co-workers are assholes. You said everything perfectly to them. Obviously they are unwilling to help, not that they can't. Don't feel bad, they don't either. Not the asshole people always try to pull this shit at my job as well. Why should I have to work for Christmas, I have a kid, why can't the single guy do it? Because he did last year and now it's your turn, Christina. Our boss asked us to figure it out. I would have immediately come back with we figured it out and it's not actually our problem if the work doesn't get done, we could give a fuck because it's not our work. It's your problem if the work doesn't get done so you can do her work. There we figured it out. The first asshole is your boss who told you all to work it out. That's their job. The second assholes are your co-workers who want you to do all the extra work because they don't want to help and think you should. Their commitments are no more important than yours. Ava is responsible for her life choices. I sympathize with her sickness but that is nothing to do with you. Natar. Not the asshole you didn't get her pregnant, not your problem. This is a all or none situation, not a let's dump on the single person situation. Fuck Ava and your co-workers. Am I the asshole?
for not letting a woman w a baby use my Costco card? My husband and I were at self-checkout and there was a woman w a baby asking customers if she could swipe their card quickly so she could purchase her groceries. She had two items, bread and something frozen. My husband was about to say yes but I nudged him and said no. So my husband had told her no. I thought that was over and done w but my husband and I got into a little disagreement and he calls me selfish then brings up me not helping the lady w the baby as an example. I thought that was completely irrelevant. Why didn't the woman have her own card? Why was she in Costco if she didn't have one? Why did she only have two items? All of those rang bells so that's why I said no. My husband sarcastically says she is asked to swipe your Costco card and not your damn CC. He's saying it says a lot about my character. Was it really that big of a deal that I said no? Am I the asshole? Here or is my husband overreacting? A family that initially said no to the lady tapped her and gave her their Costco card to use so she was able to buy her items. Even at Costco's self-checkout, there are multiple cashiers overseeing those lines. No way this could have gone down like this. As for the hypothetical should I let a stranger fraudulently use my membership card, I guess that would be not the asshole. Not the asshole Costco's in my area are revoking people's memberships if they allow unauthorized users to use their card. Not the asshole. How'd she even get into the store without a membership card? There's someone manning the door of my
Am I the asshole? For using a lot of money from my child support? My parents divorced when I was eight. The custody was split basically in a 70-30 arrangement, and my dad was ordered to pay child support. I recently turned 18, and we started a conversation about if it was necessary for it to carry on or not. My mom was very adamant that it should be continued, and my dad accepted, with the condition that the money was put into a bank account that I could have access to use any time I want. So, we opened an account in my name which both me and mom can have money from. I have been using it a lot. Mainly to buy courses, Uber drives and ordering food. I know it's irresponsible and I probably should manage the money better, but it just feels nice to be able to pay for the things I want. Today, mom sat me down to have a chat about it. She said that she uses the money to pay for my things and that I can't use it that much. I said that I understood, but that dad said I could use it any time I want. We argued a bit, and she said that if I didn't learn how to control my spending better, I should just go live with dad. My defense is that it's not like I have spent all of the money. Dad is very annoying about saving and how we should always be prepared and etc. So I put a portion of it in a savings account. And even of the money that is left, I spent about half of it. But I do understand that, if mom wanted to do something with the money, she would have to reform her plans to fit my spending. Dad says the money is technically mine to do whatever I want, but that I should be mindful of excessive spending and plan an arrangement with her on how much we each can take from the account. Mom says that I'm still too young to manage that much money and that I don't know what I'm doing. Am I the asshole? So you don't work and you don't go to school? You literally do nothing and are then using the support your mom gets to house, feed and clothe you on Uber and take out? I'm assuming that's what the funds are for, it wouldn't be child support if it was just your dad giving you spending money. In photos you mom pays for your shoes, clothes, car, school supplies, etc. Child support isn't to buy snacks and toys. It's for actual food, roof, clothes. You know, essential stuff. You're confusing child support with an allowance. If your mom uses the money for the home you live in, the food you eat, and the clothes on your back, then she's using it exactly as it's supposed to be used. If by courses, you mean school courses, then yeah, you do you there, but Ubers and fun money, just ask your dad for an allowance. Edit to add those that say he's 18 and doesn't get support, if he's in college and still lives at home, I believe his mother would still receive support for him. You're the asshole it costs a lot of money to house, feed and cloth you, plus medical costs, travel schooling or whatever else and you are then taking the money meant to do that and wasting it on things you don't need which means your mother is going to be forced to find more money to cover the costs. It's a selfish view to waste the money meant to pay your expenses. You are old enough to start learning about budgets and what it costs to keep you living the lifestyle you are used to. Have a conversation with your mother about money and it might open your eyes. Both your parents are trying to tell you that you need to learn to save and properly budget. Just because you have money in your account doesn't mean you should be spending it. It is now time to learn how to properly save. Ask yourself whether you really need that Uber ride or to order takeout when you could make food. It's okay to treat yourself once in a while, but you're 18. You need to start thinking about your future. Slight you're the asshole. Info do you attend school? You're the asshole, reading your responses you think it is a joke that your mom is fully supporting you with a roof over your head, clothes and food. Maybe you need to take the money and get your own place. Maybe then you will not find it funny that all of these things cost money. You're the asshole for your comments. You need a wake up call that I think is necessary for most people who are children at your age. Info are you still living at home? Do you pay rent, groceries, phone, insurance, etc? If you are living at home and not paying rent, it is a bit of an hour move to just celebrate having an account with money in it and leaving your mom to pick up the slack. Child support is just that. Support for the child. Not a free for all account. 
Sure your dad said that you can spend it however you want, but doesn't that sound like a shot at your mom who's paying your way in life right now? Sorry you're the asshole. For this reason. You're still living with your parent. Having an extra room mergo higher rent, using extra utilities, eating extra food, health insurance payments from her income checks. All of that and more incurs ancillary costs that get overlooked that she has a right to have priority of use the money for. But her child support is for your support, not to be used as spending money for you. Your mom should be getting that as she still houses you, buys your clothes and food. I really can't get over the fact that your dad is paying child support for an adult. Your mom pushing to keep the payments while also telling you not to go to school and that any jobs you can get without a degree are beneath you is delusional and you're the asshole. It's time for both of y'all to learn to support yourselves. Jesus Christ. You're the asshole. If you want spending money, get a job. Your mother has to have a home with a bedroom for you, buy your groceries, pay utilities, buy you clothing, pay for medical and dental bills and so much more. You are acting very selfish and irresponsible. You're the asshole. You're blowing the money on crap you don't need. Courses, if they're in relation to education or job training, are fine. But you don't need fast food. And it doesn't sound like you're using Uber to get to work or school or some other necessary place. Your mother is using that money to house and clothe you but you're making it very difficult for her to do that since you'd rather blow it on fast food. And then what happens if the money runs out? It's not like you'll be able to replenish it you'll make her carry the financial burden. No one asked for it, but I'll update talked with my mom, more calmly this time. We both apologized and she said that she might have reacted harshly because when she was my age, she had really bad spending habits and almost got herself in trouble because of it, and she was identifying the same pattern in me. We are working out a budget to see how much is going into savings, how much I can spend freely and how much we have to both agree before spending. Also, I talked about the job thing. It's still a no from her ha ha she wants me to focus on my studies. Maybe next time. Happy ending, I guess. You're the asshole. It's not really your money to spend as you wish. It's to support your upkeep. You're the asshole it's to cover the cost of raising you not for spending on whatever you want. Sounds like a dumb kid having access to money they shouldn't have access to. If you're not studying, get a job. You're the asshole indeed. After reading your comments. You're the asshole you need to grow up. You sound irresponsible and spoiled. Child support is to support the care of the child and all associated costs. In other words, to assist your mother in paying for shit for your ass. It doesn't matter how well off your mom is or how wealthy your stepdad is. You cost money. Apparently a lot more than you understand. Unless you're paying for your own shit, I suggest you spend a little less of that support money to support your poor spending habits. This post sounds like it was written by a 15 year old. You're the asshole. I have an 18 year old living at home, and I just took a few minutes to calculate what that costs me in rent, utilities, food, and health insurance. About $800 $1000 a month, just for him. This isn't including toothpaste, toilet paper, shampoo, medicine, clothing, furniture, linens, hobbies, gas used to drive him around no car, eating out ordering in, or anything except for those absolute basics. You're the asshole. Get a job, or go live with your dad. It sounds like you already know he wouldn't put up with your behavior, and that's why you're taking advantage of your mother. ESH. Your dad for telling you that you can use it however you want, you, for wasting it, and your mom for not explaining that child support is used to put a roof over your head, clothes on your back and food in your belly. It's not her money to spend as she pleases, but all those expenses add up, and that is what your dad is paying for. Info you put in a comment that you're not in school and don't have a job. Are you actively trying to get a job?